So guys, I'm gonna open a record shop. What do you mean nobody buys records anymore? Okay. I'm gonna write a musical about a guy who opens a record shop. What's my accent? I don't even know. Hello and welcome to vlog 42. Six weeks till Christmas. <laughs> I can't wait. So how's your week been? I have had a lovely time. On Monday, I was back at Zadell for the Four Harps live at Crazy Cox. Four Irish boys who can sing. What more do you need? These boys are gorgeous. If you saw my interview with them earlier in the year, you will already know Ryan, Kevin and new member Fergal. And on Monday, the fourth member, Connor, was back in the fold. He looks a bit like a sexy Ben Wishaw. Not that Ben Wishaw isn't sexy himself, but you know what I mean. These boys present a Celtic fusion and rattled through an entire collection of musical theatre treats. Now these boys know how to put on a show and they sold out at Zadell. There were literally people queuing to get a return ticket. They presented a collection of original Irish folk songs and new arrangements of contemporary songs by the likes of Sam Smith and The Greatest Showman. It was a fantastic evening, if only a little bit reserved because the audience really didn't know what to make of them. The boys did their best to get everybody up on their feet, but because it's the Crazy Cogs, you did feel a bit like you're sat in a really posh restaurant and you're not allowed to stand up. Nevertheless, the boys gave it their all and the audience were loving it. I'd like to see the boys in a proper pub venue where they could really let loose. They are doing so so well and their music is fantastic. Here are a few of the songs from the evening and you can find some of them on my YouTube channel. supporting us in this beautiful venue. Isn't it gorgeous? See the stones held in your eyes Feel the thorn twist in your side And I'll wait for you But I 
still need love cause I'm just a man These nights never seem to go to black I don't want you to leave, won't you hold my hand Oh, won't you On Tuesday, I was at the brand new Chiswick Playhouse, the new name for the Tabard Theatre. They have done a little bit of work on the theatre to improve the seating, which is definitely, definitely paid off. This is the first in the new series at the rebranded venue. I love you, you're perfect, now change. It's a show that I saw four years ago at Above the Arts, starring Julie Atherton, Simon Lipkin, Samuel Holmes and Gina Beck. It has now been given a bit of an update with some brilliant new additions to the show. It's essentially a song cycle about the pitfalls of dating and relationships spanning from meeting somebody on your first date to being married with kids. The cast now includes George Ray, Dominic Hodgson, Laura Johnson and Laura Slights. Now it is essentially a song cycle with a few scenes that link them together, with all four actors completely switching characters with each scene. Now traditionally it was girl and boy, but now what this new production has done has mixed it up to include some same sex relationships within the stories. And it works perfectly. The four actors are incredible and do a brilliant job of switching between characters within seconds. The scene transitions are brilliant too. I really, really enjoyed this show. I think they all did a fantastic job and it's nice to see four actors be diverse and just play. They have done a really good job of updating the show so it doesn't feel contrived and it just feels right. It's on until November the 30th so definitely get yourself along to Chiswick to check it out. On Wednesday, I was invited along to the very swanky brand new launch of Cahoots, the new bar in Kingley Court off Carnaby Street. If you've already been to Cahoots underground bar, you will know what's in store. The bar is set in the 1940s underground tube station and they have now expanded and knocked through to the building next door to open up and create this brilliant new space, still decorated and set in the 1940s. And everybody that works there dresses in 1940s attire. I was there on a special launch night, along with Liam from the Great British Bake Off and Carolyn Flack from Love Island. We had a fantastic evening and I will definitely be checking out Cahoots again. The staff are incredible and so, so afternoon I was at the Turbine Theatre for their new production High Fidelity the Musical. Now the Turbine Theatre is a brand new theatre opened by Bill Kenwright and Paul Taylor Mills 
Their first production was the play Torch Song, which I absolutely adored, although I wasn't allowed to talk about it because Paul Taylor Mills himself told me that he didn't want bloggers reviewing his shows. Bit rude. So I wasn't actually invited to... So I wasn't actually invited to interview... Anyway... So I actually wasn't invited to review High Fidelity. So I'm gonna say what I like. I was still very attracted to this show thanks to the incredible cast that they had in it. So I bought myself a ticket and a program and went to see it anyway. Now High Fidelity the Musical is based on the British book by Nick Hornby that was published in 1995 and was later adapted into a film in 2000. My store is called Championship Vinyl. Turn it off! It won't go any louder! I can't fire them. I hired these guys for three days a week and they just started showing up every day. That was four years ago. In 2006, the musical opened on Broadway and closed after 10 days. Now, Paul Taylor Mills loves to try and unflop a flop, having done incredibly well with the musicals Carrie and Heathers, which is coming back next year on tour. And with High Fidelity, he has set himself the challenge of making something good of this terrible musical. <laughs> He has enlisted the incredible British writer Vicky Stone to try and help adapt the musical to reset it in London, where the original book was set, but then adapted to America for the film and the musical. Working with casting director Will Burton, Paul Taylor Mills has attracted a brilliant cast that include Oliver Orms, who's just finished Cats, and Robert Tripoloni, who's just finished Jesus Christ Superstar. Now, everybody in this cast is fantastic. Now, Paul Taylor Mills also likes to champion choreographers and give them their first stab at directing. He did this previously with Drew McConey, who then went on to direct King Kong on Broadway. This time, he's enlisted the choreographer from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, Tom Jackson Greaves in his directorial debut and he does a reasonable job with the confines of a very small stage and a huge ensemble cast. There are times where it feels a bit like a high school production, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't completely sold on a direction. There were moments where it just felt a bit too animated for me. Um, but generally, but the cast do an incredible, incredible job and sound amazing. Now, Paul Taylor Mills does have a brilliant track record and his version of Bear, which I saw years ago before it was brought back to the vaults, is still one of my favourite theatrical experiences ever. I thought that production was stunning. And like I say, he has done incredible work bringing Heathers back to life. Now with the Turbine Theatre, unlike the other palace, he really has the opportunity to produce just what he wants to do. And he really does have a niche for these types of shows and really enjoys the challenge of unflopping a flop. Now, if you ask me, in some cases, if something didn't work the first time, there's good reason. And with this show, you do struggle a bit. Paul Taylor Mills is also a brilliant producer for championing diversity and also presenting stories in a new and updated way. The problem with this play is it's very outdated. It's set in 1995 and is a very dated story about a man who's looking back over his broken relationships and trying to assess why he's such a prick. But within the story, the, that character is not a particularly likeable p 
person. And as much as Oliver tries to bring some charisma and humour to him, ultimately, you're still left not really rooting for him. Now, the music and lyrics by Tom Kitt and Amanda Green are OK. But this is a musical, ironically, about musical snobbery. And the music in it isn't... It's catchy, but it's not brilliant. I'll be honest, I didn't really enjoy the show, but it definitely has divided opinion. Writer and director Ray Rackham gave it a generous five stars for British theatre. Michael Billington, who announced his retirement earlier this week, gave it four stars for The Guardian. Nick Curtis gave it three stars for Evening Standard. And Tim Bono gave it two stars for The Stage with Sarah Crompton giving it two stars for What's On Stage. Do you see the discrepancy? Out of five of those, only one is female, and she gave it the lowest. Think if that tells you anything. That if you're a middle-aged man, you'll probably enjoy this show. Whereas if you're a young female, you're probably not going to like it. There are some strong female performances in this show. Eleanor Kay does an incredible job as playing the one night stand. And Bobby Little, who plays his ex-girlfriend's best friend Liz, is also probably given one of the better songs from the show. But their characters and their story only work to serve the leading man, who, like I say, is just a bit meh. I don't feel this show offers something for everybody. <laughs> very very keen to see what else Paul Taylor Mills and his team at the Turbine Theatre produce next. Coming up over Christmas he's bringing back his production of The Cat in the Hat which did incredibly well in Edinburgh but he's yet to announce next year's season. But Paul does have incredible access and incredible resources at his fingers so hopefully next year there'll be a lot more to come. On Thursday evening, I was at the Old Red Line for Poisoned Polluted, a new play written, produced and starring Catherine O'Reilly. Now, here is an example of somebody who's got it right. As I say time and time again, it is tricky to write and produce and star in your own work unless you know exactly what you're doing. And Catherine certainly does. She has written a brilliant piece of work and she is an incredible actress. This is a two-hander which explores the story of two sisters growing up with one being a drug addict. Both of these sisters are victims of child abuse 
and the story as it unfolds explores their childhood and adulthood and relationship with each other. It's beautifully told and portrayed by Catherine O'Reilly and Anna Dulu, who do an incredible job of representing this close relationship between these two sisters. The story is so, so beautiful and really, really explores what it is to be a victim of abuse in a very sensitive and at times very shocking way. Directed by Lucy Allen, they've incorporated some physical theatre. There are no sets and no props. The stage is beautifully designed with pictures of trees as a backdrop. It is honestly one of the best plays that I've seen this year. Definitely go and check it out. It's on until November the 30th at the Old Red Lion. <laughs> Straight after this, I went to see Jerker at the King's Head Theatre. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with the King's Head Theatre. I champion everything that they do, and they do strive to make and create work which pays equity minimum. Now, in order to do this, they program two or three shows to run each evening in short slots. It's a format that works for them. There are a lot of shows that they have to put on in order to stay open. And within this, it does dilute the quality, I feel, that they present. Some shows I've seen there really shouldn't have been put on because they weren't good enough. With Jerker, it's produced by Darren Murphy, who has produced work at the King's Head Theatre, which I felt at the time fell into that trap of wasn't quite good enough. With Jerker, he has picked something brilliant. It honestly is superb. It's a simple but very effective two-hander with two men who spend the entirety of the play talking to each other on the phone. Set back in the 80s in America, it explores the AIDS epidemic in probably the most effective way I've ever seen done. It is truly, truly heartfelt. And the writing by Robert Chesley is so authentic and real and really leaves the audience to work things out. Performed by Taboo Fortas and Tom Joyner, they are both brilliant. I literally pull your heart out. Now the play does start off quite gratuitously and even by my standards, I was a bit shocked as it is quite graphic and very detailed. But the detail is brilliant and the insight into gay erotica and sexuality is spot on. These are very realistic characters that I can definitely recognise and identify with. And the story, like I say, is probably one of the best portrayed AIDS stories that I've ever, ever seen. And this is definitely probably one of the best productions that I've ever seen at the King's Head Theatre. Even down to the way the stage is simple, effective, and nicely balanced with two bedsits at opposite ends of the room. It's only on to the 23rd of November, so if you do want to see it, make sure you get in there quick. But Darren Murphy, who produced it, has already successfully transferred his production Coming Clean from the King's Head to Trafalgar Studios, which is coming back again next year. So, I wouldn't be surprised if Jerka doesn't transfer to it certainly deserves to, because it's brilliant. <laughs> After 
this, I raced over to the Boulevard Theatre, Soho's newest theatre, to see their late night series finale. Kicking off with Fra Fee, he was joined by Declan Bennett, Laura Tebbert, Laura Jane Matheson and Rob Houchin, as well as musical director Michael Bradley. Now, I've seen Fra perform solo shows before. He once did one at the other palace in the studio space. And this was a very similar show. He is an incredible singer, as well as a brilliant actor. And he puts everything into his music. And he also has a very eclectic taste in music, which is reflective in his show. Now, this is a brilliant new late night series just starting in the Boulevard Theatre, which I really hope does well. The Boulevard Theatre is absolutely stunning. And the moment they have a production called Ghost Quartet, which I've not had a chance to see yet. But, wow, I was honestly blown away by how beautiful and how huge the bar area for this theatre is. It's literally three times the size of the theatre itself, which is a beautiful, round, all-encompassing, stunning room. If you get chance, Andrew Patrick Walker, who was in the musical Brooklyn, is doing the second in the series of finale shows. Definitely check him out. He is amazing. On Friday and Saturday, I was out of town for my sister-in-law's 40th birthday, which was amazing. It was just nice to go home with friends and family and just be away from London for a bit. But on Sunday, I was straight back and straight back to the Piano Works West End and the Sing Easy space for Alan Hawke's very own show, Understudy Jazz. Now, if you saw the interview I did with Alan earlier in the year, you will know all about what he had planned. And he did an incredible job. Joining up with Michael Lynn, who did an incredible tap routine, he was also joined by Sarah Marie Maxwell. Alan is an incredibly talented performer. Who has starred in so many shows as understudies and recently got the chance to be a leading man in his own right in the 48 hour challenge Singing in the Rain. And if his solo show is anything to go by, it won't be long before he's commanding these leading roles for himself because he honestly is superb. The night was a collection of songs from various shows that he's been in, given a new jazz twist. Thanks to the musical director, Joe Hood. Here are a few songs from the evening. The sun comes up, I think about you. The coffee cup, I think about you. I want you so, it's like I'm Losing my mind. Come on, let's mix the Rockefellers, walk with sticks and umbrellas in their midst. Putting on the Ritz. So that's 
that's it for this week. I hope you've had a fantastic week. Let me know what you've been up to. Drop me a message on Twitter and Instagram. I really do like hearing from you. In the meantime, subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified about all the videos that I upload. Until next week, bye!